It's already been a wild week of news for the Destiny community. We had the Bungie Vidoc Light in the Darkness go live earlier this week, giving us an in-depth look at the narrative for Witch Queen, a lot of the new areas we'll be able to explore, the incoming seasonal content, and even more. We got to look at exotic weapons, exotic armor, weapon forging, and all kinds of things. If you missed out on any of that information, we do have videos covering basically all of it here on the channel. As usual, those links will be found down in the description box below. But but today is Thursday, February 10th, 2022, and you know what that means. It's time for this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. And if you thought all the news was said and done for the week, oh man, were you wrong. This week, we're going to be learning more about some of the incoming exotic armor that classes will be able to get access to with Witch Queen. We're learning a bunch more about Void 3.0 and how it's specifically going to be working with the three main classes. And we'll even get a sneak peek or two at the incoming legendary difficulty. But without further ado, Guardians, let's go ahead and dive on into this week's TWAB. First things first, we also had an interactive trailer about Savathun drop earlier today. If you happen to miss that, I'll have a link to the article that Bungie put out with it down in the description box below. It's basically like a three minute video where they're just kind of getting into the story behind Savathun. It was an awesome interactive experience, and I definitely recommend that you go and check it out. After that, this TWAB goes into full drive with more information about Void 3.0. For those who don't know, we actually got an article yesterday giving us a ton of information about Void 3.0, and this section of the TWAB is basically going to be summarizing that information. Of course, I'll have a link to all of those articles down in the description box below as well. But for those Guardians who don't know, of course, with the release of Destiny 2 The Witch Queen in just a few weeks, we are going to get access to a complete revamping of the Void subclass. It's basically going to be getting the Stasis Aspect and Fragment treatment. And when this change is introduced, it's going to offer players more options to choose from and how they take to battle with their Void abilities. Aspects are going to be class-specific items that players can choose when using their revamped Void abilities while fragments are non-class specific perks that are there as additional enhancements to how gameplay will feel. And as a part of this revamping of the Void element, there are going to be certain aspects that have been tied to specific Void abilities that are going to become class agnostic. Here's that list of abilities and buffs and debuffs and what exactly they'll mean. First up, of course, Suppression. With this, the target is taken out of any active ability when suppressed. While suppressed, the target cannot activate any abilities or movement nodes. Combatants are disoriented. Then, the weakened status effect. The target will take increased damage, has slowed movement, and is disoriented. Kind of like what happens when you track your cannon somebody. Next up, Volatile. The target will explode in a void detonation upon taking additional damage. If the target dies before Volatile has taken enough damage to detonate, the detonation happens anyway. Then, Invisibility. The player vanishes from sight and does not appear on radar. After that, Overshield. The player gains a protective barrier that immediately stacks on top of their existing health and shields and intercepts incoming damage. Overshield reduces the damage taken from PvE combatants. Finally, the big one, Devour. The player is immediately restored to full health upon activating Devour from any source and is granted grenade energy. When the player gets any kill with Devour active, they are restored to full health, granted grenade energy, and their Devour buff timer is extended. There we go. That's the list of uh, buffs and debuffs that you'll basically be able to apply with Void abilities moving forward. Previously, these were not class agnostic. Like, Suppress was basically something that you had to deal, uh, you had to do either with like a Night Stalker Super or with a Suppressor Grenade on Titans. Of course, Devour was previously Warlock exclusive and Invisibility was Hunter exclusive. Many of these effects, these buffs and debuffs, are going to become available on virtually all the classes. We even got to see a little bit of that in some of the trailers that Bungie put out this week. We saw a warlock basically charging up a grenade, destroying a group of enemies, and then turning invisible afterwards. This is really, really exciting, but it's only the first part of Void 3.0 that we have to cover here, because we've got some class-exclusive changes to go over. Starting off with the Titans. Here we've got some changes to the way the Ward of Dawn Super is going to activate, as well as some of your other shielding abilities. Now, with Void 3.0... Ward of Dawn can now be almost completely instantly activated while also becoming the fastest super cooldown tier for ease of access. This change makes Ward of Dawn even more of a powerful defensive tool. Basically, you're going to get your Ward of Dawn a lot faster now, and the cast time, rather than doing that really long cast animation to kind of match with uh, how long it takes to go into your Sentinel super, 
With Void 3.0, you're going to be able to instantly cast your Ward of Dawn. No more taking damage out there before your bubble even pops. Next up, Sentinel Shield will still let Titans harness their inner Captain America with thrown shields, providing range damage as a shield bash grants a full overshield. And then we get a look at three of the Titan aspects you'll be able to choose from with Void 3.0. First off is Controlled Demolition. Hitting a target with a Void ability or Volatile Detonation will make them volatile. Meaning, of course, they'll blow up once you've dealt enough damage to them. Then we've got Bastion. Casting Barricade generates Overshield for yourself and nearby allies. Those bunkering behind the shield will regenerate Overshield over time and extend the Overshield's duration. Finally, we've got Offensive Bulwark. While you have Overshield or are inside the Ward of Dawn, grenades charge significantly faster and you have increased melee damage. You also gain an additional shield throw for your Sentinel Shield Super. Awesome changes there for Titans. Next up, we've got some major changes for the Hunters. Here, Bungie states that Hunters will still be the epitome of stealth, now with even more control over what their enemies see or don't see. Mobius Quiver changes will fire off a volley of three arrows that can track targets and make them volatile when tethered. Again, that'll make them blow up. Deadfall will see the Void Anchors pull in enemies to a desired location from surface and target impact. Snare Bomb Melee will also do more to weaken opponents, particularly in PvP when it removes an enemy player's HUD and obstructs their in-game view. And the three Hunter aspects will include Trapper's Ambush, Vanishing Step, and Stylish Executioner. Here's what the three of those do. With Trapper's Ambush, players can activate Quick Fall to spin their melee charge and dive to the ground, a la Shatter Dive, creating a smoke cloud upon impact. Enemies caught in the cloud are weakened and allies become invisible. In addition, Snare Bombs upon attaching to surfaces or enemies cause nearby allies to become invisible. Then, Vanishing Step. Dodging makes the hunter invisible. That's pretty easy to understand. And finally, Stylish Executioner. Defeating a void debuff target, either weakened, suppressed, or volatile, grants invisibility and true sight. While invisible and after a stylish execution, your next melee attack will weaken enemies. Great stuff there. Finally, of course, we've got the Void 3.0 changes for the Warlocks. And this starts with a Warlock Super Upgrade titled Vortex Super Enhancement. Bungie states that with the Vortex Super Enhancement, a player's Nova Bomb will now draw enemies into the singularity that it creates, damaging them once inside. Additionally, casting a Nova Bomb with the Cataclysm Enhancement will cause it to travel across the battlefield and seek out enemies. Detonations will shatter into smaller Seeker projectiles, and shooting the Nova Bomb will cause it to detonate early. This generally allows for more control when Warlocks are on the hunt for specific enemies to take out, especially in the PvP environments. Additionally, the Warlock's Void 3.0 melee with Pocket Singularity unleashes Void that detonates when near foes, making them volatile while controlling their position in relation to the Blast Zone. We actually got to see this new melee quite a bit over the course of the Bungie Vidoc. The Pocket Singularity fires an unstable ball of Void Energy that will detonate when it gets near enemies, pushing them away from the blast and of course adding the Volatile status to them. It's basically like a big Void Hadouken. Of course after that we also get a look at the incoming three aspects to wield in Void 3.0 for Warlocks, starting with Chaos Accelerant, where you hold down the grenade button to overcharge your Vortex, Axion Bolt, Scatter, and Magnetic Grenades. Magnetic grenades overcharge into a handheld supernova. So for those of you who are wondering what's going to happen to the handheld supernova, it's still there. It's just only going to be tied to magnetic grenades. After that, we've got Feed the Void. Defeat an enemy with a void ability to activate Devour. Then, Child of the Old Gods. And this is one we actually got to see a lot of in the Vidoc and even in this article that Bungie posted here. With this, you cast your Rift to summon a Void Soul. When you damage an enemy with your weapon, your Void Soul will launch itself towards them and detonate nearby, attaching draining tendrils which deal damage and weaken the target. When your Void Soul deals damage, it restores either melee and grenade energy if you're running Healing Rift, or health if you're running Empowering Rift back to you. Defeating an enemy who is being drained also grants you Rift energy so you can cast your Rift more often. This thing sounds like so much fun. It's probably going to be the thing that I test out first when we jump into Witch Queen. 
Overall, these Void 3.0 changes sound amazing. And of course, there's even more details in that Void 3.0 article that Bungie put out yesterday. So again, go check it out if you want all of the extra details. After that, we learn a bit more about the Legendary campaign, and in particular, what you're actually going to get for running these super hard story missions. And thankfully, that's actually the first question that Bungie answered in this section. What are the main rewards of completing missions at Legendary difficulty? Well, we've got double chest rewards offering one to three extra chests per mission. Each chest will give you whirlpool gear, EXP, upgrade modules, and glimmer. Sounds good to me. Legendary players will be able to earn throne world armor and unlocks at a faster rate. And basically, the higher the risk means the higher the reward, especially when getting to the new power level soft cap in the Witch Queen. Next up, are there any unique rewards for completing the story on Legendary difficulty? Well, completing all missions on Legendary will award the players with the following. A new emblem exclusive to those who have complete the campaign at Legendary difficulty, a triumph required for the newest title for Throne World, a set of gear 20 above the soft cap at 1520 power level, that's pretty good, 8 upgrade modules, new Witch Queen exotic armor that typically is reserved for PED Lost Sector drops, and finally, exclusive Bungie rewards likely pertaining to the actual physical Bungie store. Next up, some players have been asking if this is a difficulty to be feared, how challenging exactly is Legendary? Well, to set difficulty expectations, the Legendary campaign is designed to be harder than a Legend Nightfall, though it is easier than a solo dungeon or running a Grandmaster Nightfall. Enemies are more difficult and more aggressive. They also have higher damage resistance, are more of a challenge to stagger, and shields are stronger to unmatched damage types. The challenge of Legendary also comes from switching up enemy interactions and infiltration, like swapping out an elite for a boss or having an influx of more red bar foes. Can you overlevel this content? Well, each mission caps your power similar to the raid contest mode so that all guardians have an even playing field to avoid feeling like every step is a grind. The mission launch screen will have a skull displaying each mission's max effective power. But if you're under level, be prepared for a bit of a tough fight. The next question pertains to whether or not this is going to be solo friendly. To which Bungie thankfully answers, yes. They've had a lot of aspirational content in the past, but Legendary gives them a chance to give solo players more equal footing with those that opt into playing with a fire team. Enemy damage and health is going to scale to match your fire team, though it won't be a one-to-one -one scale because triple the boss health isn't fun. Even still, it will be enough to keep a veteran trio on their ornamented toes. And they also didn't want to trivialize darkness encounters compared to solo play, so you're limited to one revive per player for each darkness zone, and a shared timer of 40 seconds before an automatic wipe happens. I've said it time and again, but you've got to stay close to your friends and be ready and able to pick them up when they fall. Finally, will players be able to tone down things if Legendary is a bit too much for their playthrough? Well, there is going to be, of course, an option to leave the mission and relaunch it through the classic Destiny 2 settings. Some players will want to focus more on the story than sweating for that first run, and that's, of course, totally fine. They want to support that. And, of course, for those who want more of a challenge later, they've added nodes to replay any of the Witch Queen campaign missions on classic or legendary difficulty at any time, after you've beaten the mission once, of course. So great news all around when it comes to the legendary difficulty for campaign there. I like that they're going to be adding rewards. I hope it's going to be farmable. They talked about adding upgrade modules to the uh, the chest at the end there. I do hope that's going to be kind of like a farmable thing. So just like with Legend and Master Lost Sectors right now, if you want to just keep running that legendary story content, I hope they'll let you do it for rewards. But all right, the last thing we have to talk about is actually something pretty exciting. A new look at some of the incoming exotic armor. We got to see a lot of this over the course of the last week, but this section of the TWAB is going to give us some in-depth information on a few new bits of gear that we haven't seen before, starting with the Lorelei Splendor Helm for Titans. This thing comes with the perk Cauterizing Flame that allows for sunspots to heal players when they have Sun Warrior. If you're critically wounded, no biggie. The perk also ensures that a sunspot is created in your location to give you that one last fighting chance with that quick grenade and melee ability recharge and longer supers. Plus, more damage is always a good thing. So essentially, it's like a sunspot version of the stag for titans. The next exotic is one we've actually seen, the Hoarfrost Sea chest piece. This will grant you the Glacial Fortification perk. When a player is using stasis, it allows for a titan's barricade to become an impressive wall of stasis crystals. These crystals will slow any target that gets too close, while also boosting a player and their fireteam's weapon reload speed, stability, and range. 
After that, we get another peep at the incoming Warlock boots, the Secant Filaments, also known as the What Are Those Mark VI. These grant you the perk Devouring Rift, which will grant players devour whenever they cast their Empowering Rift, allowing for damage from both allies and individual players the ability to disrupt foes, but of course, in awesome style. Then, of course, we've got the Ozeomancy Gloves, which give you the Fervid Cold Snap perk. These will grant your Cold Snap Grenades an additional grenade charge that will recharge faster when it makes direct impact. The Seekers spawn from Cold Snap Grenades will also travel further. Definitely interesting stuff. Then, for Hunters, we start out with the Blight Ranger Helm, which comes with the Voltaic Mirror perk. This perk allows players to redirect with their Arc Staff Super to deal an increased amount of damage to enemies and gain even more orbs of power generation for your allies. And then finally, we've got the incoming Hunter Gauntlets, the Renewal Grasps. These come with the perk Depths of Duskfield. This gives Guardians a much larger radius for their Duskfield grenades, while also nerfing incoming damage for allies within that Duskfield's range. Any targets locked within that space will also deal out a reduced amount of damage. So go out there and make those Hive cry. That's actually a pretty cool setting. You basically drop a super enhanced Duskfield grenade. It's going to nerf incoming damage for your allies and make enemies trapped inside deal less damage. Good stuff all around. Like a miniature silence and squall that you can just keep on charge. Overall, these exotics sound really interesting and I cannot wait to get my hands on them. But alright Guardians, it's pretty much it for the biggest bits of news contained in this week's issue of the Bungie Weekly Blog, This Week at Bungie. Tons of information is released this week, I would not blame you at all if you're having trouble keeping account of all of it. But of course, if you'd like to read even more about these incoming changes, there are links to everything down in the description box below. Make sure you go check it out. But that's the news. Those are my thoughts. Be sure to leave me yours down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. I'm out for now. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.